Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about how I prepare for a job. Mostly I'm going to talk about how I choose the gear I'm going to use. So first, I'm gonna start with how I store my gear. I've already made a video on this, but I store everything in this tool chest except for light stand, backdrops, and that kind of thing. Pretty much everything goes in here. On the bottom drawer, I have all my cameras and my lenses. On the top drawer, I have some of the most common things I'm gonna need, like memory cards, etc. And then I have um, a lens drawer for lens caps, lens hoods, vintage film lenses. So I have like a old Canon FD lens, I think right here, that kind of thing. Um, and then on my third drawer, I actually have tools that I often use. So it is a tool chest and I actually keep tools in it, print stuff, etc. cetera. Uh, let's move on because I have a whole video dedicated to that. So. The first thing I need to decide is what bag to bring. I've been using for something like eight years the same bag, and before I got this bag, it was used for about 30 years from a photographer I second shot for when I first started. After using this bag for 30 years, he gave it to me and he bought the exact same bag. He really liked it, um, and I have had no complaints. It's rugged, it's beat up, but it, it does the job and I'm not really, I looked years ago for an upgrade and then I didn't really find what I wanted and I'm like, I'm not gonna spend 400 bu bucks on a new bag that I don't really love. So I kind of stuck with it. Most of the time, this bag is full with all my gear and it will hold everything I absolutely need except things like studio strobes, etc. I can hold up to something like seven lenses I've gotten in here, my two flashes, memory cards, batteries, etc. All the stuff you might need, um, gaffers, tape, that kind of thing. So if I'm shooting often enough, everything is already in this bag. If I know I'm not gonna shoot for a while though, I usually offload everything from this bag into my chest, which I did yesterday because I shot a job on the weekend and I don't have one next weekend. Things are slow because of COVID and so I said I will load everything back up. Now the benefit of storing your stuff in a, in a chest like this is everything is in one place and I can lock it. So that's really handy. Uh, I live in an apartment. If I am gonna have maintenance done or something and I'm not gonna be home, I'm really trusting, but it's always smart to lock your stuff. I, I, in my head, nobody would ever steal something, but <laughs> I'm clearly wrong because um, my stuff got stolen not long ago. So I do have other bags that I use if I don't need as many cameras. Uh, one's in the car, so I don't have it with me. But one thing I often do is bring a secondary bag and what I'll do is I will offload stuff I don't need and put it in that bag and leave it in the trunk. Or I will do the opposite and I will take the stuff I know I'll need from this bag and I will just transfer it into a smaller bag. Like I said, I don't have my other photography bag with me, but I have my messenger bag, which I basically converted into a photography bag. Uh, I just took the in, inside padding from another bag and I just drop it into my messenger bag. This is my bag I use occasionally for work, although, you know, it's like not as professional looking, whatever. But typically it's my own personal bag and what I've got in it is like a film camera and a laptop for when I'm teaching photography, that kind of thing. I'm not really teaching photography right now, um, but I'm working on a virtual class that should be coming soon. Let's talk about choosing what gear to bring. Now choosing what gear to bring is really gonna depend on the job and the logistics of it. So for example, I shot a wedding last weekend, a small backyard wedding, which is something that seems like there's going to be a lot of. And it's in a home, so I know that. I don't know the size of the yard initially, you can ask, but I, I didn't ask. But I have to say, okay, my bag will be safe so I can bring a lot of gear. I may not be able to back up, so having zoom lenses will come in handy. And other than that, what other things are there to consider? Uh, pretty much that covers everything. Now, what I did is I brought everything except like one lens. Uh, I have a 200 millimeter I don't use, but and I don't bring a nifty 50 with me on a job because I only have the cheap one for, for the EF system. And so I brought 
pretty much everything I knew I would need to tell a story. So since space wasn't going to be an issue, I brought a 17 to 40 for my very wide shots. I bought a 24 to 70 for my standard lens that I would use for the majority of the time. I bought, I brought a 30, 135 millimeter for when I needed more reach and when I wanted to get sort of those very blurred, blurred out background candids, which I really like shooting at weddings, really zeroing in on people. Uh, and that was pretty much everything I brought. Ah, and of course my 85 millimeter. The truth is, I barely used it, but I did end up using it. Second body. A second body is something that I pretty much will always bring. The only time I will maybe consider not bringing it, um, and there's really no reason to not bring it, bring it because it's easy to throw in a bag, but the only time I maybe wouldn't bring it or I haven't in the past is if I'm shooting a local portrait session. I mean very local, meaning if my camera died, I could be home within a few minutes, grab a different camera, and come back. Uh, batteries. Batteries, I always bring at least one extra battery. Uh, it depends on the job. If you're going to do a two-hour portrait session and you have a full battery, you'll probably get by. However, it's always good to have one extra. When I'm shooting a large job, maybe it's going to be an eight-hour conference, I bring every battery I have, which is four batteries in total, and that's been enough. But even then, what I'll often do is I will bring a a charger just in case it can never hurt memory cards I load up my camera in advance with the amount of storage I know I'll need but I do bring some backup cards in case I find that 64 megabytes is pretty much always enough for almost every job I ever shoot uh, I try to be very economical with my shots and what I mean by that is I'm not shooting for no reason every shot has purpose I am trying to capture something specific and then I will grab that shot. I'm not timid about shooting though. You don't want to miss shots, so it is a fine line and you can find that balance. Also what I do is throughout the day, I will self edit or if it's a large job and I have an assistant, I will have them edit down my work for me. And what that means is they're just going through the camera and editing down. I actually find that editing in camera, meaning just deleting bad shots, is quicker than going to Lightroom and doing it. I find it very quick to use the scroll wheel on my camera and just quickly delete shots. Uh, the last thing to talk about is a film camera. I almost always bring a film camera to a job. Not always, but almost always. And I do that, I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but I do it because shooting film is so enjoyable for me. It really slows things down. It makes me really think about the shot. It makes, it's a different way of working. I love the look. I just love everything about it. So I do it for me. But I've found that my clients are starting to really appreciate it. It's really resonating with people. Some of the film portraits I've shot of VIPs, uh, people really love. So I think about what film camera do I want to bring? If space is really an issue. I have some tiny little film cameras I can throw in my bag. I have my go-to film camera if I really can't make a decision, and that would be my Rolly Flex. The reason I choose the Rolly is because it drops right into my camera bag because it's a rectangle, it takes a space of one lens basically. Um, but I think about what I'm going to shoot with my film cameras. If I know, for example, when I photographed Nancy Pelosi, I was like, okay, Nancy Pelosi, big deal. I wanna create a portrait of her. I'm gonna shoot in medium format. And so then I choose a medium format camera. Uh, this is my latest medium format camera that a, a, a friend of mine uh, left with me before he passed away and um, I haven't gotten a chance to use it professionally but it's something I'm really excited to try. If I'm shooting an event and I want to challenge myself by shooting some live action film, some moving stuff, then what I'll, I will usually do is use my Canon 1V if I really want excellent portraits. I have found that it has such a great autofocus system that my hit rate has been like 34 out of 36 shots. And when I didn't get a shot with it, I knew it. I didn't get that shot um, because I could see I, there was some user error. By the time I pressed the shutter, I could see it defocused, that kind of thing. So if I want something really reliable, but still challenging, I use my 1V. But if I just want to have fun and shoot some film, then I can, it can be anything portraits I like to shoot medium format and down the line I'm thinking about even getting into 4x5 or 8x10 work when I'm actually shooting jobs. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, it's something I'm considering right now when things pick up. All right, 
that's it. I hope this video was entertaining or educational or interesting or I don't know. But if you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you can support me on Patreon. That's growing at a steady rate. I really appreciate everyone that's helped me out with that. Unfortunately, now when I'm not working a lot, um, it's more helpful than usual. It's not really income I've ever counted on, but it's been appreciated. Thank you guys.